welcome to the data future channel this is shaker and i am a data scientist so in this particular session we are going to develop a deep learning model uh, which will use the artificial neural network and uh, here we are using that model uh, deep learning model for the um, customer churn prediction so what exactly customer churn so customer churn is also called as the customer attrition suppose if uh, a specific customer can use um, the product stay with the services or sometimes what has it is uh, if it is not satisfied with the service or the product it uh, that customer will stop using the services or the product so we need to just uh, predict whether the person or the customer that uses the same uh, same service or the product okay uh, so again this is the classification problem but it's a, a binary classification here uh, yes let's get started uh, but uh, here we are using a deep learning model okay so the first thing first is you have to uh, just import the, all the required libraries here uh, we are importing a numpy pandas matplotlib c1 where the numpy pandas can be used for the manipulation data manipulation matplotlib c1 used for the data visualization and here you are uh, we are uh, using the tensorflow uh, which is uh, help us to build the artificial neural network right so we are checking what is the version of it version of tensorflow so you can see that the 2.12.1 okay great so the first part uh, we will load the data uh, we know that <coughs> how to load the data pd.read underscore csv and here uh, um, i'm having the churn modeling um, uh, churn data set customer data set so we will see the first five rows where you can see the row number customer id surname and the actual data starts from here the column number four that is customer scores geography gender age tenor balance number of products uh, has a credit card is active member estimated salary and the exited so this is our target variable exited means uh, if uh, zero means uh, uh, the customer will stay with the product or the the services and if it is one means customer will stop using the services or the product so we can say it's a customer churn right so we just have to predict one or zero based on the these attributes now you can see the uh, the size of the data data is um, 10,000 records and 14 columns we can list down the number of columns uh, list down the columns these are the columns and these are the 14 columns we can check the data type of the each column so you can see some of the integer float and object means categorical columns are also there so surname but uh, these first three are not important actually uh, there are two categorical columns one is geography and gender and rest of all are the numerical one so it's a quite simple data set mm, here we are using uh, checking whether there is a any duplicate uh, values are present in the data set it is showing false means there is no duplicate we are checking uh, if there is any null values in the each column zero shows that there is a no null values okay the data is quite fine um, i'm listing down the, uh, the categorical columns and the numerical columns so this is the standard way i am using i am using a data set a data frame dot select underscore d types include object object means it's a categorical one and exclude object means other than categorical one means it's a numerical one right so these are the categorical columns and these are the numerical columns okay yes now i will uh, um, i will visualize the data so here i can see that the customer geography and i'll plot uh, plot the bar bar chart right so you can see that on the bar chart you will see the france germany and the spain with their numbers right 
then i'll plot for the gender because this is the categorical one so you can see the males and females number and exited um uh, i'm i'm uh, again using a bar chart and you can see that uh, the customer staying with the product or the services is 7963 and uh, the customer are uh, leaving the service is 2037 so actually this data is for bank customer and uh, we have to check whether that customer will stay with the bank as a customer or um, that customer uh, will stop using the bank services right so that we have to predict and so that you can see uh, there is a lot of imbalances there so you need not worry about the imbalance okay these are the uh the numerical columns and i am checking what uh what is the difference between the uh the customer which is uh, using the services and stay with the staying with the bank services and they are some customers with the uh they are stopped using these services so i am using the group by for this and i am applying this for all these columns numerical columns and what i will see uh, here is 0 and 1 and I am taking the average of this credit score. So, uh, those, those people who are having a greater credit score will stay with the com uh, stay with the bank. bank. Uh, the younger people stay with the bank. Tenor is greater than 4, is uh, uh, almost 5, uh, is stay with the bank. Balance is around, uh, it's a lesser kind of balance you can see check these people are having a greater balance average balance uh, number of product use is this and estimated salary is this means those who are having a lesser balance and the lesser salary uh, their chances are uh, staying with the bank services right and the using the bank uh, product right uh, here i am plotting the histogram for all these numerical variables uh, in in one go so for that i am using customer data numerical columns these numerical columns dot hist and i am deciding the figure size here so you can see that here there is a customer score sorry credit score is uh, what we can say it's uh, not it's quite normally distributed and rest of all this is here you can see there is a uniform distribution you can see here uh, in this two graph um, here you can see uh, see there is a skewed one uh, these uh, both are the skewed one right so balance uh, so uniform is tenor and estimated salary credit score is quite uh, normally distributed age is uh, slightly normally distributed but uh, again it's a skewed one here there is a balance uh, which is uh, a skewed uh, we can say and uh, number of products used right now you can see the data uh, this is our data now you have to split the data into x and y so our x is uh, starts from the credit score and ends here expected uh, estimated salary and the exit uh, exited is uh, what our y okay so y is called as the uh, label or this is called as the dependent variable and x is the independent variable so we are splitting the data here now here what i am doing i am i am dropping these columns which are uh, no use row number customer id and surname uh, surname okay yes uh, now uh, you can check the x data now you can see 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 so 10 are the predictors means the features and uh, our target variable is exited right zero one zero one okay the next part is we need to encode the data now encoding uh, is applied for the geography and the gender okay so first uh, i'll use the label encoding here from the sklearn dot preprocessing i'm importing the label encoder and creating the object of it and i'm applying that label encoder to this gender and here what I am doing, I want to check uh, how these categories uh, are encoded. There's a one is uh, male and uh, um, one is male and 
zero is female something like that suppose there are number of four five categories then you have to keep the record of that um, uh, that encoded uh, value okay so that you can understand uh, while predicting so female is zero and male is one the same i am applying with the, for the geography and here it is uh, suggesting uh, that the france is zero germany is one and spain is two so it will assign the number in the alphabetic level okay yes now next part is the x head yes we have to split the data into training and testing so that we have to import a training test split from sql and dot model selector selection okay so here i am splitting the data into x train x test y train y test right and i'll check the shape so almost 80 percent data we are using for the training and 20 percent data we are using for testing so out of 10,000, 8,000 and 2,000 for the testing, right? Next one, uh, now you can see that the, all these features are at different range and on different scale actually. So we have to bring them on the same scale. So for that, I'm using a feature scaling. So feature scaling will give you uh, the, it will help you to converge the solution in the quicker way, right? So there will be a lesser time required for the training one. So here and we'll get the accurate results. Here I'm using the standard scaler, which can be imported from the xscaler dot preprocessing. You can create the object of the standard scaler and just fit uh, to the x train. But here you have to use the sc dot transform to x test. So sc dot fit underscore transform for x train and sc dot transform for x test. So why why this difference is there? So sc dot fit underscore transform means what? It will learn from the data and then transform. But for the testing, we have to use only transform. Again, you need not uh, because it's kind of the uh, it's kind of the model where it will learn from the data and standardize the data. So once it is learned from the extent, the same uh, learning it will apply for the x test if you apply the feet underscore transform then uh, yes uh, it will again learn from the testing data that should not happen so here uh, for the feet underscore transform you have to learn and then transform and what you are learning is done here uh, for the standard scalar that you have to apply only uh, apply for the uh, testing data okay so we have done this uh, speech of scaling after scaling you can check your x train and x test okay so i'll check the x train and x train is look like this okay it's a standardization we have done okay now the important part is we have to build the artificial neural network okay so the first thing is you have to initialize the ann and that can be done by the using a tensorflow tf dot keras dot models dot sequential because why sequential be, because um, we have we will create the sequence of the uh, the information transfer from one layer to another layer right so yes so uh, we have initialized the model now what you have to do we have to add the input layer and the first hidden layer now here i am using the add add method and dot add and tf dot keras dot layers and i'm using a dense means they are fully connected and here i'm using a six so how many number of units you are using it's uh, there is no any thumb rule but you can select uh, based on the experimentation you can select a six seven eight uh, yes but again uh, it should be a optimum value and there is activation function ReLU is there. Um, uh, <clears throat> uh, ReLU uh, activation function that can be added for the hidden layers mostly, right? So the first hidden layer we are using, so input and the hidden layer, first hidden layer. Then the second hidden layer is will be same again, no change. So here the second hidden layer is created. Now it uh, we have to add our output. 
so output will be 0 and 1 0 and 1 right so units will be 1 here and the activation function is not relu now it's a sigmoid so sigmoid basically gives you the probability and based on that um, uh, if probability is greater than 0 0.5 then it becomes 1 and lesser than 0 0.5 it becomes 0 something like that right so our final uh, output will be uh, only 1 right so i am running this yes. our model is ready here now you have to train the model right so uh, so for that first we have to compile the model where while compiling we have to um, give the three parameters one is optimizer so which can optimize the the processes second one is the cost function or the loss uh, and third one the matrix which matrix we are choosing okay so here we are using the adam uh, optimizer uh, here we are using the cost function that is the loss as the binary cross entropy so binary cross entropy why it is binary cross entropy because it's a binary output right zero one zero one and last one is matrix is the accuracy so this is the compiling phase of artificial neural network now our model is compiled now you have to train the model so again the train can be done by any way so n and dot fit x train comma y train and you have to decide the batch size so batch size is suppose we are having a data of 1000 and if you create the first batch size is 250 so 250 means uh, uh, initially it will pass the 250 then it will pass 250 something like that right so so it will create the 40 batches okay of 250 samples uh 250 samples and the 40 batches right uh, so um what you will get so you will get uh, the total number of uh, the iterations right now the epoch is nothing but what uh, it's a it's a pass uh, where we are uh, the uh, all the all the training set will be go uh, pass through that iteration okay uh, so what happens uh, and inside that there are number of iterations okay in each report there are number of iteration depends upon the batch size now suppose we are having a 8000 right 8000 and batch size is 250 so there will be a 32 iterations in one epoch so epoch is basically consider one epoch means consider the whole training data set where the in the second unit of uh, epoch again consider whole data set training data set but here in each epochs it will adjust the weights so that the cost or the loss function loss or the errors are reduced and every time it will update in each epoch it will update the weights so for that this epoch is there and inside that there are uh, iterations right so one epoch will uh, cover the whole training data set and inside that there will be a multiple iterations now here there will be a 32 iterations now i am fitting the model and you will check yes you will see the in every epoch okay uh, we have considered the 50 epochs right so here there are 32 uh, iterations are there and you can check the accuracy so every time you will see uh, it will uh, it will reduce the loss and increase the accuracy so that will happen in each epoch so in each epoch uh, the uh, it will adjust the weight or the updates the weight by using a back propagation technique so finally we are getting the accuracy is the 85 percent okay okay fine so this is the case where we training is done now we are making the predictions now uh, this this part uh, where uh, what we can say um, i'll cut this uh, we have to do the single observation uh, the uh, prediction for the single observation by using this model that is the nn model is ready so i'll check uh, now you have to pass uh, these 
these inputs right and then we have to check now what i am considering i am taking the input from the user by using this uh, like credit score is there then geography is there gender is there right and then uh, what i'll do i'll create the input data now you can see here uh, what i am doing i'm creating the input data here in this phase okay so this data is nothing but the data which is given by the uh, input uh, uh, user right so i'm creating the list of these values here and then i am using a transformation because uh, already we have used the scalar transform uh, standard scalar um, uh, for the feature scaling so here also you have to apply the same standard scaling and you have to transform the input data and then you have to get the predictions now these predictions will be a probability if that is a uh, uh, greater than 0.5 then we can convert it zero and uh, lesser than 0.5 means it will be uh, uh, zero right uh, like this so customer stay in the bank or the customer leaves the bank means stay in the customer means in means what it will be zero and customer leaves the bank means uh, it is uh, the the prediction is one actually the customer will um, exit the uh, exit from the services which is offered by the uh, bank right so let's get started so one by one we will uh, give the inputs yes uh, so initially i'll give the input here as the credit score is 613 okay geography is zero means it's a france uh, the next gender is zero means it's a female then age i'm considering it's a 42 then uh, tenor is two years then balance is 24,000. Okay, number of products using is one. Uh, the credit, it has has a credit card is yes. As active member is yes. The salary estimated is 35,000. Okay, now this data is created. Now I'm uh, taking these all the variables into a list and I am using this. Nice okay so what uh, it has given so what it is saying it is saying that the customer stays in the bank right means uh, yes customer will um, uh, using the same services bank services okay so one more time we'll check so instead of that uh, i'll use directly data because it will take certain time for the data imputation so directly i'll take this data input data and i'll check uh here you can see in the sequence you have to uh, provide the data uh now it is showing the customer will uh stays uh in the bank again for this particular case right so uh, this is the case where we can see uh, okay we'll check one more data here uh, i think already we have chosen this data we'll check for this one i'll say this is the data where six one uh, nine here then France is nothing but zero. The female is zero. Then the age is 42. Then number of years staying here. Then balance is zero. Then number of products whether having the credit card 
and the active member and the estimated salary okay now i will check okay customer stays in the bank this is showing uh let me just check once again okay so um every time it is showing uh, yes because we are selecting uh, some of the false uh, false positive maybe right so uh, no need to worry you can check you can select some of the uh, records where uh, you can check uh, by using the what is the predictions for a particular case right so you can take the y predictions and the y actual okay so here i am using the confusion matrix here where you can see this is the confusion matrix and we will see the accuracy is here and this is the confusion matrix but if you want to try the other data datas here so you can select any one of the data and you can cross check and here from y test and y predictions uh, you are getting these values so that is good actually this accuracy is good actually and um, uh, from from this uh, from this uh, the confusion matrix what we can say that there is a lot of miss uh, classification is also there for some are the actually one but it is predicting zero they are actually zero and predicting uh, it's a 56 numbers that is one right so this is correct but you can improve the accuracy by uh the fine tuning the model and uh, uh and using some of the hidden layers right so that you will get the uh, good accuracy uh, with the correct output right so this is all about uh, the uh, the customer churn model by using a deep learning um thank you thanks a lot